Welcome back to another episode of The Knowledge Bomb. I'm Nick Fowler. We're continuing our discussion around recovery. Today, we're going to talk about how to implement biometrics to increase your recovery. So what do I mean by biometrics? Basically, we're looking for some data from you, your body, that is going to be an indication of your readiness to train or your ability to recover. There's so much data out there and available to you through testing, right? VO2 max, heart rate testing, lactate testing, um, you know, there's HRV, heart rate. I really want to pare it down to the gist two specifically because we could talk all day about all of these things. And what I want to talk about and focus on is resting heart rate and heart rate variability or HRV. I think that resting heart rate and HRV are two of the basic indicators that can give you some insight into how you're recovering and your readiness to train. A lower resting heart rate correlates with better aerobic capacity, if that makes sense. So if you take your resting heart rate, this should be done in the morning, okay, just before you wake up, uh, the lower that number, the better off you are. I've seen numbers as low in the high 30s. That is a very, very aerobically fit individual. You might not see uh, 39, 38, whatever it is. You might be in the 50s or the 40s or whatever that is. The number doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is the fluctuation of that number. Okay. Now, we're going to put that resting heart rate on pause as we talk about HRV. Okay, heart rate variability basically measures the variability between your heart rate, okay? Now, the higher the number, okay, the more recovered you are. And this typically ties to the nervous system in particular, okay? So just like your resting heart rate, heart rate variability can give us some insight into physiologically how we're recovering and our readiness to train. There's an inverse relationship between the two. So as your resting heart rate decreases, your HRV tends to increase, okay? And so if you've been training a lot, there's a, met a lot of metabolic stress, your resting heart rate first thing in the morning is gonna be a little bit higher and your HRV is gonna be a little bit lower. So what does this really mean? Well, the first thing is you wanna find an accurate way to track and measure these, these two biometrics. Now, really, you can look into uh, complex HRV programs with a chest strap. Um, back in, in, in the late 90s, I used to take my resting heart rate in the morning and journal that number every, yeah, basically journal it every morning and then track to see fluctuations for when I felt like I needed a rest day. Nowadays, it's much easier. My preferred way is just simply with the WHOOP. Uh, if you guys don't know about the WHOOP band, it's fantastic. There's tons and tons of information that comes out of it. At some point, maybe I'll break down uh, all of its capabilities and maybe from the view of a coach, the value that I see from it. But just to keep things simple, we're gonna talk about resting heart rate and heart rate variability. The WHOOP is constantly collecting data. So it'll take your resting heart rate and your HRV number throughout the night and just before you wake up, it's gonna log that data. I think it logs um, you know, a piece of information every hundredth of a second, maybe. Um, I could be off on that, but it's a lot of information every second that it's collecting. So it's extremely accurate. And the cool thing here is, is that you can see it tracked over time. And that's the importance of looking at biometrics and really trying to understand um, how to use that information. So as you track your resting heart rate and your HRV, you can see the fluctuations. And the key here is you need to be able to put context around those fluctuations. Okay, so let's say um, your HRV dips and your resting heart rate goes up on Wednesdays and it resets on Thursdays. Um, then you know that you're really, really stressed on Wednesday and you're recovering on Thursday, if that makes sense. An important thing to keep in mind is don't let these biometrics dictate how your day, your mood, your readiness to train is. Remember that it's only information that's being added to what you already know about yourself and the questions and really the daily audit of your readiness to train. So one thing to keep in mind is that these numbers, this data is only part of the picture. You really need to, before you let the numbers dictate 
how you're going to feel or your readiness for the day, you want to ask yourself some questions and you want to go through more of like a personal audit. The things that I typically ask athletes to do is look at when you wake, what's your mood? How's your patience? Are you impatient? And usually, you know, 10 to 30 minutes when you wake up, you'll kind of get a sense of how things are going. What's your overall hunger level? Are you hungry in the mornings? You should be. Uh, also, how did you sleep? Okay, kind of assessing your quality of sleep and your quantity of sleep is going to tell you a little bit. Now, you take these pieces of information, you combine them with that resting heart rate and the HRV, and they'll paint a better picture for you. And really, what we're looking for is an answer of saying, should I train today? And if I do train today, how valuable is that training session going to be? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about peaking and using biometrics to peak and taper for comp competitions. It's a much, much bigger topic. But really, if you start using resting heart rate and HRV, become familiar with it, put some context uh, around those numbers, right? Meaning lifestyle context, you know, stress, training sessions, your ability to recover, sleep, all these different things, and you'll start to see a pattern. That pattern is what's important. So it's gonna take some time, but I encourage you to take a look at your resting heart rate and your HRV over the course of maybe a month, two months, and you'll really start to understand the patterns which exist, and you'll be able to shift some of those patterns to get more out of your training session.